Hey, what's going on guys? It's G right here and what you're looking at is my recording setup and Yes, even including my tablet as you can see my tablet is ready to rock and um, I'm actually able to successfully control my recording rig from my tablet using RTP MIDI and Touchdown which is an app that you can buy on Google Play. I just got the trial version right now because I'm kind of playing with it, but I have a feeling I will be buying this. Um, the neat thing about it is it's fully functional once you buy that fully, you know, registered version. And you know, Now, it's just a control surface. It, I wouldn't think it would be able to, like, control and edit, like, the actual waveform and all that, but... You know, the fact of the matter is I can actually use it as an all, a second screen UI for, you know, like if I'm having to mix levels and stuff, I don't have to keep changing screens and I don't have to keep moving around. I can keep just VU meters all right next to each other and get a better reading and just control it from here. As you can see, it's telling me this it's trial version. So, yeah. But anyways, so uh, yeah, I do plan to actually buy the legitimate version. And you can see, like, every so often, whenever every time you change positions, you get different tracks available. Because as the um, demo version, you don't get access to all the tracks right away. Which sucks, but that's just the way it is when you have the demo. But the full version, you would unlock all the trackings. So I'm going to flip it on its end here. And see now, this track is unavailable, which is going to be my bass guitar, but my two guitar tracks are available. And you can just keep fidgeting with that unless you want to buy it. But it's fully controllable. Like, I'm going to flip it up again. I'm hoping to keep... Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I lost one of the guitars in that, version, in that format. But, yeah, that's just part of the trial. Kind of was hoping it wouldn't do that before because I had all four tracks. There it is. Nice. Okay. Anyways, this is the demo version, and I'll show you that it's fully functional. I will control sonar now. You will even get a reading of the, D, you know, the exact setup right here. As you can see, there is a digital display. It says I'm at 100, blah, 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 freaking blah. Now, if you look up here, it's the same exact reading. But anyways, now I'm going to push play on... I got headphones out. Well, it's not one. They say, did it calibrate it? Yeah, it did. It was a computer measure seven. See, I'm still learning this unit. Now watch. I can turn down the master volume. Okay, maybe not. I think that's disabled. But check it out. Now I can work. Now I'm going to keep my hands on the drums. See, watch. Look at the drums fader over here. It's wirelessly controlled. Now we bring the bass guitar in. It's really quiet. Let me bring that. Can I, I wish I could just double tap and the drums are set to zero, but it won't. Now I just... This is just used for demo purposes. You can see I'm clipping like mad. So I'm gonna come back over here, turn that down until. Okay, now I got that. Let's go to guitars. This is one of my guitars. All right, pretty close. Now let's get the last guitar in. And you can just simply match them up right here. As you can see, it's really loud. But of course, I got my headphones blaring, so you can kind of hear it. But yeah, it's a pretty neat little setup. And um, like I said, it's wireless. I can literally just bring it over here. And it calibrates, literally, to, see as you can see, it reset me back at count seven. Now I can go all the way back by seeing this little rotary wheel or I can just simply push this button and it'll take me four, three, two, 
one. Takes me back a measure each time I push the button. See, I'm at measure two now, but I think I'm missing the button. There you go. All right. There it is. Okay. And now I can start from the very beginning of the track. Or I can do the same in reverse. Go forward. So let's start the song. I want to hear the drums. I'm going to just mute the drums. How cool is that? Mute the drums out. Soloed. Muted out everything. And here's neat. This is also neat. I don't know how well you can see this. Okay, I'm going to close this song out. And I'm going to open up another one using my computer. As you can see, this still has all the settings already here, right? I'm hoping I can do this. I'm going to back up. Now, I'm going to open up this song. And it should automatically reconfigure my app to... Yeah, notifications. If it doesn't reconfigure it, we can always fix that. But, it, you know, it's okay. See, it brings in more stuff each time. Now, this is a different song. Now, the one thing I will say about it is... See, it's already recalibrated to this one. The one thing I will say about it, see, it's neat, huh? But the one thing I will say, I don't think there's even anything on this track. A little bit of something in there. I wish there was a way to turn off the metronome. See, I wonder what all these other tracks are. See, they're all armed for recording, but there ain't even nothing there. Just something I was messing around with the other day. But, yeah, just wanted to show you all that. All right, guys. Um, for those of you who want to know how to hook this up, you will need RTP MIDI. It's a um, piece of software and you will it will require Apple's Bonjour but here are my settings for it as you can see I have touchdown is connected via Wi-Fi via RTP and you can see it's still got all my previous settings from the last song in it but touchdown is connected via RTP MIDI onto the wireless network and this picks it up because it's on the network so it'll find it and um, you make two sessions, one for your actual DAO and one for MIDI controlling like a keyboard or an instrument, which this, which this um, app is apparently capable of doing too, but I haven't gotten that far with it. And um, you just line them up. As you can see, I have, for this one, I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see that's the MIDI. I'm not going to sit there and mess with it too much. As you can see, I also have it connected and whatnot. And you got to do this for both of them. I'll do a better tutorial on that. And then in Sonar, you just add a uh, service controller. Once you got the two MIDI, the uh, DAO and MIDI sessions enabled in Sonar, you just add a new controller. And here's the catch. You make sure that the input and the output are both the um, DAO for or sessions now on your uh, settings but you need to make sure that your MIDI control surface is set to Mackey control that's crucial because otherwise it won't work right also in also in here you need to make sure that in your settings let me go to settings real quick and I'll show you you go into settings and you gotta make sure that when you go to controller Let 
Let me go. Let me back out. I messed up. Okay, here we go. Your controller is set to sonar. The sequencer, excuse me. MIDI connection is, like I said, you can go in here. It'll say USB is unavailable, which in my case it is. Then R2. Hmm. Then set it to local. As you can see, I got. Okay, yeah, I gotta click OK. Dodgy. Local. And click OK. There's your paperwork. And that's the DAO setting. And then that's how you know what to assign it to in the RTP software. So yeah, um, really all that, it's actually that simple. And um, like I said, I'll do a better video of it. But yeah, that's my Galaxy Tab 4 now being used as a digital audio interface remote control. Cool, huh? All right, guys, this is G signing out. Peace.